Hello everybody and welcome to Lauren Loves Color. This is Lauren. It is a beautiful day today. I am filming this on a Sunday and the weather is gorgeous outside. So we just got back home from church. My husband is taking my son to the zoo to give me a break and my daughter is asleep for a nap. Oh my gosh, it's this just much needed, peaceful, quiet time for me. So I definitely wanted to come upstairs, get filming, and bring you guys some new content. Um, as you know, it's been an extremely busy month for me in the month of April. I've also been very sick. Um, for about the first half of April, there was a virus that has just swept through my family. My daughter started with it. I got it. My husband got it. Fortunately, my son has been okay. Um, but it's just been a really, really really rough few weeks. So I'm glad to say we're over the hill now. It's our weekend of recovery. We feel spiritually invigorated. We feel physically invigorated. And so it's time to get back to normal. So I wanted to come to you today with a tag that I was tagged in quite a quite a few weeks ago, maybe two or three weeks ago, but I'm just now getting to film it. Um, I want to thank Nisi. She's Dollar Diva 99 She tagged me in this and um, I have made my list of my top 10 essential coloring things, supplies, and things, I guess, in general. And so I want to share those with you today. In front of you is number one for me. This is my swatch book. This is the Color Charts book by Yasmin Eldahan. Eldahan? Um, and I first saw this with Danielle Danny Buttons. Um, she was the one who introduced this to me, and of course I had to get it. This houses um, all of my swatches. You will see I have everything kind of nicely labeled here. Let me zoom you in just a little bit so you can see. And um, I have pretty much everything swatched, and so I reference this a lot when I color, um, especially if I'm trying to color match for something that is like... Um, a color by number book. It's really, really helpful for me to have swatches readily available so that I can kind of pull different colors as I'm coloring. Um, and what I like about this book is kind of the swatch sizes are just large enough. And I like that it's on Amazon paper. Um, a lot of swatch books are on nicer paper and there's a wide variety of them. Um, but I like that this is, it's the consistent pages throughout. So it's not like one section of pages for blending, one section of, of pages for swatching, one section of pages for practice or something like it's, they're, they're all all these blank and I don't have very many left uh, every single page is kind of a blank color chart page here and um, it's on Amazon paper and that is normally what I color on I don't have a lot of fancy books and so I wanted something that had um um, that ha that was on regular Amazon paper. I think I am almost done with this swatch book. It looks like I literally have two pages left um, before I am done. And actually, there are some things that I haven't swatched. So I may need to be getting another one of these soon um, just so I can continue my swatching journey with supplies. Um, but this really serves me well. Um, Danielle also had the kind of brilliant idea to use a binder clip. So if, let's say, I'm on like my Ohuhu water markers, I can binder clip it here so it's easy for me to kind of reference um, and flip to the page I'm looking at. Also, if you are an Ohuhu fan, um, Ohuhu markers, some of the marker sets come with this. My 200 marker set came with this thing. It's kind of this flimsy plastic thing, and it doesn't fit a regular 8.5 by 11, but I found it fits very nicely um, behind these as I swatch. So if you've always wondered about what to actually do with this, this is perfect um, for actually using in my swatch book. Um, so I have it back here, and there are some miscellaneous kind of, you know, some of the swatch cards and stuff that come with the marker sets I have back here. This is kind of a Tombow um, dual brush color chart. Um, and then this is just a random piece of cardstock, I guess, that I've been using to kind of swatch different things on. So I have those just kind of in the back of my book, but this sits next to um, my coloring area. I use it almost every single time that I color and I'm very grateful for this. Um, secondly, one of the most important things kind of segueing into um, blotter pages. This is a blotter page. Um, and blotter pages that I use. This is actually an old hospital bill. Um, maybe I shouldn't show all of that. This is also a whole hospital bill that I've paid. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so I have a whole bunch of blotter pages. I actually have a stack of them next to me. Um, and I just use regular copy paper or like, like old mail, um, that I don't use anymore. I usually use about three pages, three to four pages behind anything that I color. And of course this is essential for me because alcohol markers are what I use most. Um, more than anything else, alcohol markers are what I gravitate towards. Um, it's what I love coloring with. And so um, because those bleed through pages, I absolutely need blotter pages next to me to make sure that my colors don't spill onto the next page. 
Number three for me is going to be alcohol markers. You all know I am a huge, huge, huge fan of alcohol markers. I have quite a few different sets of alcohol markers. Um, I'll just bring these out because these are probably my most used and they are closest to me. This is my set of Copics. Um, this was kind of a recent acquisition for me. I have now matched most of my kind of frequently used color by number books with my Copics. I will say I don't use my Copics for everything. They're good for some things, but not all things. Um, and uh, yeah, but I do love using these. And so these are a very common um, and heavily used product by me. I um, This case is new. You'll see this kind of in my haul as well. And um, I just really enjoy using alcohol markers. If you are new to alcohol markers and maybe you want to get a cheaper set of markers, this obviously is probably the most expensive alcohol marker you can invest in. Um, there are quite a few others I highly recommend. Caliart, um, many of you are going to be familiar with Caliart. They're usually my go-to Caliart markers with just the regular nib and chisel. They also have a brush set. Um, those are okay. I like them. Um, but I would say the regular fine nib and chisel are probably my favorite. And then the Teo Tree art markers, which are a skinnier marker. Um, and you can get 101 of those for actually a really nice um, and affordable price. So those three are my most heavily used. I also have the 200 set of Ohuhu. I am not as big of a fan about the Ohuhu markers. I feel like they dry out a lot quicker. And so I just haven't had as much luck with those. Um, but Cali Arts and the Teo Trees, um, I highly recommend. If you are somebody who is invested in coloring and want to invest in something longer term, um, the Copics are um, a really, really beautiful marker to use. So um, I do recommend these as well. Um, <clears throat> for number four, number four is going to be color charts um, and sticky notes. <laughs> um, so when I am coloring, you all know I primarily use color by number books. This is just a couple of, um, I'll use that and then let's find, where's my mandala book? Here we go. So um, you all know that I primarily do color by number books. And so uh, I don't like to... Um, I like to have my colors already picked. I like to use consistent colors in the books that I am coloring in. And I like to have my colors already picked so that I can easily pick up a, num a, a coloring book and just kind of go to town. And so um, I have, you'll see some manual ones that I've created. These are um, kind of my Copic swatches. Um, and you'll see like Jade Summer, Such and Such Diva, Belba Family, Color Questopia. I have my matches for all of those markers here and those sit with my Copics. I've also created a... Um, a color chart for, and I'll zoom in on this a little bit, a color chart for two publishers thus far for a variety of different markers. This is the Color Questopia color chart. I have also recently made one for Sach and Sach Diva. If you are interested in getting those, if maybe you own Cali Arts Ohuhu's, Teo Trees, Bic Intensities, um, and I need to add my Copics on here as well, um, is that I am adding those, um, I have those color charts. They are on my link tree. So if you go down into the description box, you will see a link to my link tree. When you click on that link, you'll click on color charts there. It will take you to a Google Documents. It's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. And it will have my Color Questopia color chart in one tab, my Such and Such Diva um, in another tab. And you're more than welcome to take these. Um, they are nice suggestions for whatever you, um, or at least to kind of start you thinking about how you want to match your markers um, to the colors there. They're the those These are the colors that I use um, for each marker set for these publishers. I do plan on um, hopefully by the end of the month, this may stretch into ne next month doing it for Sun Life Drawing, Kira Shershneva, Belba Family, um, and things like that. Because right now, what I have, and I'll show you kind of in my Mandela's book, let me zoom back out a little bit for you, is that honestly what I use most, and if you're new into color by number, this is what I use most frequently are sticky notes. So I write down on the sticky note um, my color, like here's the color chart for um jade summer and so um here's the colors they use i just simply write the numbers down on a sticky note um, each number and then the corresponding marker number um, that i'm going to be using and what i do is when i am coloring a page so 
sorry, lots of zooming today. I literally just move the sticky note from page to page to page, and that keeps me on track with what I think I'm going to use for the next subsequent page. So um, I have a hoo hoos and I have my Teo trees, and so whichever stickies I use, I just pull them from book to book. So I um, like that method. It works really, really well for me. Um, like I said, you can also print off the color charts that I have here. This is Color Questopia, so I have this printed off because I'm going to be coloring a page in one of their books here very soon. Um, but uh, yeah, so any of those methods work, but I will say having like color charts or stickies or, you know, whatever it is, is so essential for me. Um, it makes my coloring for my color by number books so much easier because color matching is very time consuming and tedious and it's not my favorite thing to do. So um, if I have something that can help me through that, um, um, through that journey, it's it's very helpful. Um, number five for me is my lamp, and um, hopefully I will link it up here if I can remember. I'm really bad at remembering to do that, but um, I did a recent tour of my coloring space. I have a little lamp. Um, and you'll see I'll turn it on right now. Um, and I use this lamp to color. I actually use it for work as well. I just like some extra natural light. Um, I use it a, a lot of times when I film too, to just kind of give me some, some extra light in the space if I don't have good natural light from my windows. And, um, I really, really love having that. So, um, yeah, so a lamp is absolutely essential for me because I feel like it makes it a lot easier to see the colors, to see the lines where you're coloring, and um, something with good natural light is really, really helpful. Um, number six is going to be YouTube or a color tube, and I actually had somebody fairly recently ask me about what color tube is. Um, let me see if I can open this for you. You may actually see right now or recognize I am watching, um, Danielle, Danny Buttons. This is her April coloring haul. And so she's going through all of her books. It's very, very common that I am listening to YouTube or a color tuber, um, while I am coloring. And for those who may not know who color tube is, color tube is what we re refer to anybody who does YouTube videos about coloring. So that can be, um, me, I'm technically a color tuber. Um, Danny Buttons is a color tuber. Nisi Dollar Diva 99 is a color tuber. Any anybody who posts anything about color tube, and I don't know if all color tubers do this, but I do for each of my videos. Um, you can tag a video, so you can put in keywords that if somebody searches their videos will come up. Color tube is one that I always put in as a tag. So if somebody types in color tube, my videos come up. Some communities, like when I was in the cross stitching community, and my original YouTube journey started started with um, cross-stitching is floss tube is what they call that and so actually most everybody in their titles of their videos called it floss tube episode 3 or floss tube episode 15 um, or floss tube April Hall or whatever you wanted to say. I haven't seen that as much in the coloring community and so that's not what I do consistently but just know that um, anytime you're looking at a YouTuber um, that is coloring they are you are technically watching color tube kind of the coloring section of YouTube. Um, this is my iPad. I have this that sits next to my desk and I use this really frequently. I use it a lot for video editing and things like that as well. I can control my phone through my um, iPad um, when I'm filming, but um, mostly what I use it, it to is to um, listen to videos and to um, edit videos that I have. So this is definitely um, an essential for me. Um, next, what I have are going to be some gel pens. Now, not just any gel pens, but these are kind of what I consider my essential gel pens. Um, I'll bring them out for you here and the ones that I would highly recommend. Um, so these are just a few different examples. So these here, let me zoom in just a little bit for you so you can see a little bit better. This is what I primarily use for kind of my embellishing. So when I am finishing a page, I have these sitting directly next to my desk. You'll see them on my coloring space tour as well. And this is what I most commonly use to embellish my pages. The most frequently, <laughs> most frequently use the VIP of my coloring is my Uniball Signo white gel pen. Um, this thing comes in very handy to do things like highlights, um, to add detail, um, to flowers or different anything, clothes, um, anything like that. I use my Uniball Signo white gel pen a ton. I have absolutely learned to love this and it is a must have for me. 
Secondly is going to be probably my Jelly Roll Stardust. This is the one in clear. They do have them in different colors, but I only have the um, Jelly Roll in the clear. Um, and this just adds some sparkle. So you can color in alcohol markers or any type of marker really, um, and just add this over the top and it just adds some subtle sparkle um, to the uh, page. And so you don't, if maybe you don't want to invest in a whole bunch of different colors of glitter gel pen, you can just buy a pack of like one, or I think you can buy them in packs of two or three um excuse me these add it over your marker and it adds just that nice subtle sheen it is like a silver glitter so it's not like a different color glitter I don't think you can buy them I wish they had these in gold um maybe they do exist if anybody knows of like a gel pen that's like a clear with just some subtle gold sparkle um that would be nice to know comment down below in the comment section if you know that but these are fantastic also from the jelly roll line of which I consider absolutely kind of my newest necessity are the jelly roll glitter glaze gel pens. This one is in clear. This one is in black. I have them in the other colors. I actually have on my wish list too. Um, I want to get the entire line. Um, you guys will see in my finished pages some of um, how creative ways and how I have used these. The one in clear is great for things like to go over eyes or bubbles or you know different things like that. It adds this kind of just wet look to it, this glossy wet look. Um, the black can be great for things like shoes and stuff like that. Or also if you have the Color Questopia books with the white outline, um, Michelle, um, she from Kits and Caboodles has used these on those lines. And I've done that once a long time ago. And I love the way it turned out. These do take a little bit of time to dry. So just know that they do smear, but these have become a staple um, in my collection and I'm using them more and more and more. So I absolutely love these things. I think these have been a great recommendation. They come in, like I said, a white variety of different colors and I'm hoping to get the entire collection of Jelly Roll Glaze soon. I'm sorry, I'm still, the stuffiness keeps coming back after I talk for a little while. Um, last kind of in the stable are my Jelly Roll Metallics. I have a whole line of these as well. Again, just a way to add some metallic shine. Um, Jelly Roll, as you can tell, have become really a big staple for me. Jelly Roll, I love, but I have the white Jelly Roll. They have white Jelly Rolls too that a lot of people swear by. I would get the one or the, the 10, the size 10 um, Jelly Roll for the white if you're going to get it. I have have the point eights and they're not quite as good. I like the Signo Uni Ball better, so I've stuck with these. Um, but Jelly Roll is a great line of gel pens if you're looking to invest in some gel pens. Lastly, some budget friendly and not so budget friendly glitter gel pens. Um, these are just standard glitter gel pens. Um, these are probably um, my favorite. These are the flare glitter gel pens. Um, Jamie from Jamie's Coloring Love got me turned on to these. They're extremely cost efficient. Um, you can find these on Amazon and they are packed with glitter. Um, I have the whole color it uh, glitter gel pens and these way outdo these. And because I only use glitter gel pens, I don't like to really color with glitter gel pens. I really like to use them for accents. I highly recommend these. They come in a nice variety of different colors and um, these are fantastic. Um, also, these are really great. These are the Jot glitter gel pens and these you can get from the dollar store. So there's like a pack you get of like five of these um, for a dollar. So these are really cost effective and fantastic. Last two are the less cost effective um, option. Oh, and I forgot to get these as well. Um, these are kind of my dual metallic glitter gel pens. And so dual metallic and what that really means is that you'll see two different colors when you color with them. Um, these two are both by Pentel, the Sparkle Pop. Um, there's a there's a range of these and these are really fantastic. They're really, really beautiful. Um, wide variety of different colors that you see and they're really, really fun to add things that are like fantasy or details on dresses or drapery or I, I use these a lot. Um, this is the same line, um, but just in different packaging. These are the dual metallic, the hybrid dual metallic. I think these may come in a slightly wider range of colors than the, than the um, Sparkle Pop, but on Amazon, um, I got these thinking that they would be different and they're not. They, it, the, the colors actually align with the Sparkle Pop a lot. So um, just be wary of that. I would get one or the other. I wouldn't necessarily recommend getting both. Lastly are the Divicle Dual Metallic. These come in some different colors outside of what Sparkle Pop offers. And these are a really fantastic 
budget friendly dual metallic pen. I think they come in a pack of 12 um, on Amazon. They're really great and have a wide variety of different colors. So I would highly recommend these if you're looking for something really budget friendly. So those are the glitter gel pens or just gel pens in general that I use. They're essential for me. I use one or all of these in the pages that I color and I just highly, highly enjoy those. So let's talk next about number eight. Number eight, let me get it out, are going to be kind of one of my newest finds for this year and that's going to be my stickles. Um, let me pull all of them out and stickle like things. Um, you'll see here in just a minute, it's going to be more than just stickles. I have acquired quite a few of stick, quite a few stickles in a very short amount of time, but they are an absolute essential for me. I use these in my color by number pages. I use these in my non color by number pages. I use these, um, anytime that I can. I really love sparkle, but I love sparkle in kind of a detail format. I, like I said, I don't like to color with glitter gel pens and things like that, but I really love stickles. They are a glitter glue. You can find these on Amazon, Hobby Lobby. I think a lot of people get them from scrapbook.com, I think is maybe the cheapest place that you can find them. Um, but I have purchased mine from Amazon and I've gotten them on discount at Hobby Lobby and maybe Michael's. Um, I've gotten some of these and I hope to continue to expand my collection of these. They are the just absolute glitter, glitter packed, glitteriest, beautiful, just a fantastic, beautiful glue. Um, I use these a ton and I love the detail that it gives. You've seen these on some of my finished pages. If you have, you will see some in my finished pages for April. I use these any opportunity that I can get because I absolutely love, love the effect that it has on the page. So if you've never tried stickles, I would highly recommend doing it. They do have a wide variety of similar to kind of how some of the gel pens work that I said are clear. They do have a wide variety of colors that are more clear. So this one, Stardust, Crystal, and Unicorn, they all have a slightly different combination of glitter in them, but they're all the same thing. So if you wanted to maybe, I would, I would recommend just starting with this because what you can do is just add them over the pages that you already have, like over the alcohol marker. And so it's not like it's going to change the color. It's just going to add some sparkle to it. And so if you, even if you just want to start with that and then maybe see from there, if you really like it, you can build from there. Um, there's also from Ranger, these are liquid pearls. This came in one of the sets that I bought and this is really beautiful. This does have that pearlescent metallic -y kind of look to it. And these are really beautiful. I've used these in a recent page um, as well as Ranger also makes these glossy accents. Um, they also make like a crackle accent um, that I found out about recently. And the glossy accent though, I really love added over eyes, bubbles, things like that. They are glossier than the um, Jelly Roll Glaze. This is like a subtle gloss. This is like a high intense gloss, but I really learned to love these. Put these over glasses, eyes, bubbles, water, um, anything that you want to look wet and these are really beautiful. Again, you do have to let these dry. Any of this stuff you're going to have to let dry. The stickles, I would say, I mean, you probably want to leave things out for at least about four hours um, to dry, maybe even longer, depending upon how thick of a layer you put on. But um, these have become a staple for me. I, I, I'm just in love. I've been converted. I used to think I would hate stickles and hate the texture on the page and stuff, but it actually dries somewhat flat. They don't dry super super raised and they haven't inhibited my coloring on any of my other pages. So, um, I recommend them. I am looking for, um, I probably will be soon looking for an alternative way to store them because honestly the, oh no, it's my daughter. Honestly, the best way is to, um, Hold on one second. Let me just silence this. She's just trying to turn over. Um, the best way to store them is upside down. So, um, yeah. So I highly recommend stickles. If you haven't tried them, they're fantastic. Next is going to be my stamper. So this is what I use to actually mark my pages. Um, Nikki and Niagara, I think, was the first one I saw do this, and I fell in love with this technique. Um, you can just change the date on the bottom. You press this down, and there's a little kind of red button here. You press to hold it here. You can change the date on the stamp, and then um, just stamp at the bottom of your page what date it was that you completed it. Now, I have pretty good handwriting. Um, I don't think my handwriting is the worst, but I love the consistency. 
um, um, of how this looks. And I even use this like with work to mark my notes, like what, um, like for my meetings and stuff like that, like what date I started, um, you know, to do my notes and stuff. So use that a lot. And then last but not least is going to be this guy. This is my calendar. If you see at the end of each month, my kind of monthly plans and goals, you will be familiar with this. This is my calendar. This is specifically my coloring calendar. I don't use this for anything else. Um, I have some goals that I set at the beginning of um, each month. And then within each month, I actually keep track of monthly goals, but then I also keep track of like my um, coloring pages. So you may have just gotten a sneak peek of the hashtags I plan on using for the rest of the year, but um, you'll see that I kind of keep track of the number of pages that I do, which pages I color when. It's just a nice like reference for me um, and a way for me to stay organized with my coloring. Also on each calendar, I keep track of which videos I'm going to be posting and when um, because I bulk film. And so sometimes I'll post three or I'll, I'll film three or four videos at a time. And I use that calendar to kind of help keep me organized about maybe when I want to actually post the videos publicly on YouTube. So yeah, so that is um, the last of my top 10 coloring essentials. I want to thank you for joining me um, on um, on my video today. Um, I am not going to tag anybody in particular because I'm pretty sure I'm one of the last people to do this video. However, if you are a color tuber and maybe you haven't done this tag, please comment down below because I want to formally tag you. As well as if you don't have a color tube, maybe you don't film YouTube videos, give me like your top three um, or even your top two or top one. What are your what are your coloring essentials? Because I'd love to learn from you and maybe there's something that I don't know about that I probably need to explore. So it's fun to kind of share and help enable each other. Um, but I hope you all have a, um, the rest of your day is just a beautiful day. Enjoy the nice weather if you have nice weather. If not, I hope it gets better for you and I hope you have a great week. I will see you all next time. Bye.